On Christmas Eve of last year, we introduced the Corsair Concept Slate with an air-cooled ultimate build that was pretty neat, but apparently left some of you wanting more. Well, your blue balls can rejoice because the blue monster is complete. And we're gonna walk you through the process of building in the dual system case that Corsair introduced as a crazy concept but looks like it is actually coming to market. But first I gotta tell you what's not a crazy concept, Mack Weldon. Mack Weldon makes great underwear, t-shirts, socks, wallets, and more. They believe in simple shopping, and if you use code TECHTIPS, you'll get 20% off at the link below. The first step was to remove the previous air-cooled build that was done for comparison's sake, starting with the one quadro that was left in it after the system got raided for our triple projector gaming setup, then finishing with both motherboards with their air-cooled hardware still attached to them. Next began the tedious process of installing GTX 1080 short top blocks onto all of the quadros, these coolers have shorter acrylic covers for improved compatibility with cards like the P5000s that we're using, and then a single standard full cover water block for the GTX 1080 Ti. The plan here is to use that last card for a dedicated compact gaming system while the Quadros power a top of the line workstation. Now, as much as we'd have loved to film the entire process here in real time, I don't think even our petabyte project server could stomach that much 8K red footage, and neither could I, so time lapse it is. Oh man, that's looking good. I don't know if I could ever get sick of gorgeous CNC work like that. Mm. The two CPU blocks were a little bit easier to install, sort of. Our mini ITX Strix Z270 motherboard gets a standard EK Supremacy Evo, so that one was all good. But getting the Rampage 6 Extremes mono block on is a bit of a weird process that involves punching through the plastic blockages in the mounting holes on the motherboard, replacing the VRM heatsink with something reminiscent of an M.2 cooler, and then finally hand tightening the thumb screws on the back. After popping both boards back into the slate, followed by the four quadros, we arrived at terminal time. The last build that we used one of these for was actually with a custom one designed for seven cards in seven gamers, one CPU. So then, I mean, by comparison, quad GPUs is a pretty normal configuration. So this four-way terminal is Again, by comparison, an off-the-shelf item and a perfect way to plumb up a whole motherboard full of GPUs. Just be really careful with the O-rings. Don't tear them and make sure that all eight are properly seated because a leak right in your GPU stack is very likely to end up killing something. To cool our dual system build, EK graciously provided two quad 120mm XE series radiators for the workstation portion, and then an additional triple 140 thick radiator for the gaming system. So that's right, folks. We're gonna be running two independent loops, which will allow our systems to function without the need to power on both of them at a time. Mounting the rads was impressively easy thanks to the fancy sliding mount system that Corsair built into the slate, but we're actually a little torn on our choice of light loops for the 13 fan slots that we're filling. For the imposing but classy aesthetic that we ended up going for, we think it may have actually been a bit better to go pure performance with their maglevs instead. The rest of the planning, bending, cutting, tinkering, small modifications and cable management, or lack thereof, took about two days on and off, resulting in a super clean aesthetic, accomplished in part by our signature hard in the front, soft in the back style. You might think it's kind of dumb, but it actually saves a significant amount of time, both during the initial build and, more importantly, whenever you need to crack the loop open for maintenance. Then it was time to fill up the loops via the installed D5 pump and reservoir combo units, starting with the workstation build. This way we could make sure that no leaks sprouted in any spots that our ITX systems GPU would hide. And 
No leaks, surprisingly. With thankfully the same story again for our ITX build, which is really good because it would have super sucked to empty both loops and fix a leak down there. With both of them mostly full, we poured in some coolant concentrates from PrimoChill, first an opaque white for the workstation, then a light blue to match our cables for the gaming build. But before we get to the glam montage, no, not quite time yet, I wanna run you guys through our cooling results. For the workstation, temps went down from just over 70 degrees average on our 79XE 18 core extreme edition to 61 degrees, a pretty decent improvement, even if I think we could do better with delitting. And then as for our GPUs, those dropped almost 30 degrees from an average of 82 down to 53.5 at full CPU and GPU load in Ida64. And this is with all of our fans running at their minimum speed. So this thing is super quiet. As for our ITX system, well, we saw big improvements there and not just to temperatures, also performance. With so many cards installed in our workstation, our little mini ITX air-cooled system was limited to a suffocated low-profile Noctua L9i, which caused our 7700K to hit 100 degrees and throttle 30 to 50% at stock speeds. Our water-cooled rig, predictably, turbos the CPU up comfortably and maxes out the GPU at 54 degrees after a prolonged stress test. Now, with that out of the way, here's one of our famous glam montages set to music. Okay, so that was fun, but um, back to reality for a minute. Why? Why would anyone need a case like this? Well, we came up with a couple things. Let's say that you do 3D design work in programs that can take advantage of multiple graphics cards like Blender or 3DS Max. With a system like this, you could dramatically speed up your render times and still game or do other work while the main system is chewing away at a large job. Or how about streaming? Many streamers use two systems so that they can keep encoding to one of them to avoid impacting the primary rig's gaming performance. With all of that said though, since literally none of the internal components get reused in a configuration like this one, and the slate is slated to cost as much as two separate high-end cases, there are some pretty strong arguments to be made for just having two normal systems like stacked on top of each other. So once again, we're turning to you guys in the comments. What would you use a concept slate for? Let us know. 
And while you're at it, let us know if you've ever heard of iFixit. I'm sure you have if you watch our channel. iFixit is all about teaching people how to take stuff apart and fix it. And they're leading the charge in the electronics repair tools industry as well with their iconic black and blue Protect toolkit. It's now only 60 bucks and features their 64-bit driver kit, a wide variety of plastic opening tools, spudgers and picks, a suction cup with a new fancy handle to remove display assemblies, their own rubber handled Jimmy Pry tool, a set of metal spudgers, ESD safe tweezers and an ESD safety strap, all backed by iFixit's lifetime warranty. So head over to ifixit.com Linus Check out their over 25,000 free repair guides and get your own fully loaded ProTec toolkit for just $59.95. So thanks for watching guys. If you disliked this video, you can hit that button. But if you liked it, hit like, get subscribed, maybe consider checking out where to buy the stuff we featured at the link in the video description. And while you're down there, you can check out the link to where to buy the, wait, is that the one I just said? Right, our merch store, which has cool shirts like this one and our community forum, which you should totally join. See, I was holding up both hands as I went through because it's got two systems. See, it's subtle, you know? That's LTT, it's subtle.